Hello, my name's John Pratchett, and in this video, I'm going to try and demonstrate to you my method of stopping NDI going over your Dante network. So you're in the situation where you want to run a production network for your NDI, internet access, etc., and you want to run a Dante network in order to be able to move Dante around between all your devices as well. So you have machines like, for example, vMix machines that will be sitting on both networks. That is your NDI production network, so they can transmit NDI information between each other and access the internet, but also they need to be on their separate Dante network so they can transmit Dante audio to each other into the, uh, the audio console, for example, or comms or some other system. So you have two network cards effectively in those machines. All well and good. Uh, each of them is on a totally different network uh, and no problem, right? Well, there is, and you've probably come across it. Uh, the problem is NDI, uh, and that problem occurs in that NDI will automatically load balance across any network card that it can see on the machine that will get it to its destination. So, for example, you've got two vMix machines, and they've got two cards in each. And you want to send NDI from one vMix machine to the other vMix machine. Uh, fine, you select it, it and um, it connects up, no problem at all. And what NDI does, NDI goes, oh, I'm going to use this network card and talk to them. No problem. You then do another connection uh, from that machine, say something else, and ND guy goes, oh, I'm already using network card one for NDI. I'm now going to use network card two. And so it goes over the other network because it says, oh, they're all connected together, so I'll just use those networks. This is a bit of a problem because one of those networks is your Dante network, and you want to keep NDI off of that network. Um, and having NDI just randomly choose, effectively, what it looks like, randomly choose a network card to go over uh, is not going to help keep NDI off of your Dante network. Now, keeping Dante off your NDI network is easy. Dante is great. When you, when you run up the Dante software, you can choose what network to run it over, and it will stay on that network and won't interfere with anything else. You cannot do that with, da with NDI. There is some advantages to that. If you're not running a Dante network and you want more bandwidth in your machine, just stick some extra network cards in there or stick some USB-C network cards in there, and you go from 1 gig to 2 gig to 3 gig if you're just sticking gigabit network cards in there, and, Dan and uh, NDI will just automatically load balance across them. So as long as NDI can reach its destination over a network card, it will try to use it. It will look at which one's been underutilized and go, I'm going to use that one, and that will be your Dante network sometimes. So we'll, we'll demonstrate this now. Let me show you what we've got. So we have a machine uh, which is, uh, let me go to this camera. So I've got a machine up here which is actually running uh, just uh, vMix in the background. Uh, here we go, let's just pull this up for you. And it's just running some NDI sources out. And then I've got this machine down here which uh, we're going to pull those NDI sources in and we are going to monitor the network activity on the cards. So let's have a look what happens. Here we go. So this is what we've got. Uh, up at the top here is a machine that is in fact just running uh, vMix. There we go. And it's just sending out a few videos, bouncy balls, time, and a bit of Big Buck Bunny. And we all love a bit of Big Buck Bunny. Uh, over here is a uh, another screen where I'm going to run some studio monitor instances, and we're going to pull in those feeds. And then what you're interested in is in that corner there is the stats of my two network cards on this particular machine. Uh, we are looking at the production network, which is the one that we want the NDI on and then we got our Dante network which is the one we don't want our NDI on. So at the moment all the firewalls and everything is switched off so Dante can do whatever it wants. So let's have a look at that. I'm going to open up Studio Monitor. Um, I'm going to open up a number of times so we can get it to hopefully start picking different network cards. So there's one up, there's two up. How are we doing? 24 meg, 77 meg, definitely coming in production at the moment. Let's open up another one. How are we doing? How is our Dante network looking at the moment? Oh, yeah, it's okay. Let's have a look what happens with these, shall we, as we pull them in. And 
There's Big Buck Bunny. Oh, hold on a second. What's happening to our Dante network? No. No, 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 no. Don't go over our Dante network. Let's pull in another one. I don't... Where's, I've got a feed coming in over my Dante network. It looks like I've possibly got two feeds coming in over my Dante network. Any minute now, we're going to get a counter. There we go. So, we have some data coming in over our Dante network. Um, probably not. There we go. 61 meg. Um, some bit, most of it's over production and then it looks at least at least one has decided to come in over our Dante network. Um, and that's not good. That could, depending on how much Dante you've got, how much uh, NDI you're running, how good your switch is, that sort of thing, that could start causing you problems with audio um, specifically because it could just interfere with your Dante network and we don't want that to happen. So let's talk about how we can um, prevent this. There are a number of ways. I'm just going to close these off now. So let's close those off and you'll see everything starts to drop down. Uh, let me just flick back to this one for you. So this is my vMix machine that we were running those videos off. I've just, I just got it minimized so out of the way we don't really need to be seeing it. So there are a number of ways we can do this. You techie network people you can go and do that on your network switch. If you've got the right managed switch, you can start doing port blocking and all sorts of things on switches. Um, a lot of us just uh, are going to have just a couple of machines, uh, the Windows machines, and we just want to just do a simple, I just don't want NDI to go from one machine to another. Uh, NDI is very stubborn and will find a way if it can. Uh, but we can do it uh, with Windows firewalls pretty simply. Um, so if you've got two network cards, uh, we want to put them into different profiles effectively within Windows Firewall. Uh, when you have a network card that has internet access and everything, it tends to default itself to the private. If you have something that hasn't got a gateway, can't access the internet, calls itself a um, unidentified network, it tends to put it itself into the public. Now you want to get your Dante network into the public section of your firewall. Um, if it hasn't automatically gone in there because you do have like a, a, a default gateway and it could access the internet, for example, then we need to change that. Let me show you how you quickly can do that. Um, working on the fact you're running Ethernet, which of course you will be if you're doing this. Uh, when you go into settings and the network internet section, you're running Ethernet here. We can click on Ethernet. And then you have your unidentified one, for example, here. Uh, but let's say this one here, which, I, which is called network. Here I can choose whether I want it private or public. If that is your Dante network, stick it into public. And then this is what we're going to work on. It's that profile that we're going to work on in the Windows firewall. Let's go back a level. De -de 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 -de. Status, there we go. So from here, we've got our network cards in. You can get to the settings, network and internet section. Uh, let's click on Windows Firewall. And you want to make sure that uh, everything is off by default uh, internally here. Uh, we don't want anything blocking anything. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to turn our firewall on on our public network. OK. However, that does not stop NDI going over. You think, yeah, the firewall's on. It's going to stop NDI. It does not. We have to put in a rule on this network to stop NDI going over this particular profile, which is going to be the Dante network port on it. So what we can do is go into advanced settings here, brings up this, and we are going to go into our inbound and outbound rules, and we're going to set up two rules um, to help stop the NDI. And these are, I'll, put, I'll show you the unbound because there's a little bit less going on here, blocking of TCP and UDP NDI. So effectively, what we're doing is we are blocking a set of ports. And those ports are these here. That is 5960 upwards. And the way NDI works is every time it makes a connection to you or to out of that machine, it will use the next available port number. So the first one will be 5960, the next one will be 5961, 5962, 5963. So the bigger the range that you block above 5960, the more NDI streams that you can block onto that machine. Bear in mind, you've got to know what your network card's capable of and things. There's no point blocking 150 instances of NDI coming in if you can only take in five or six anyway. So just block a, you know, a good amount that you think that that machine would possibly ever have in it. 
So here I am blocking uh, 5960 to 5970. So I will create this rule again for you so you can see how I do it. We go up to, and we want to do it in outbound and we'll duplicate everything we do in inbound section as well. So I'm going to show you how to now create this rule. What we do, let's go back to here, is we will go into new rule, port, click next, and then we are going to do TCP in this instance. And this is what we want, specific remote ports. 5960 dash, for me, I'm going to do 5970. OK, then I'm going to click next. What do we want to do? We want to block those ports. So we put a blob in block, go to next. And then we only want it to block on the public. So it's take off private and domain. We actually have the firewall switched off on there, but let's take them off and make sure we're only ever blocking on the public. So click next, give it a name, and then click finish. Now I'm going to click not click finish because I've already set this rule up. So I'm just going to click cancel. And then you'll end up with this TCP IP NDI. You then want to do exactly the same. New rule. Block port. Go to next. Let's move in the middle. Just put that to UDP and put exactly the same details in again. And then you'll have, I've done TCP NDI and I've done UDP NDI. And I'm going to do the same in my inbound rules as well. So you'll see I've already done it. TCP NDI and UDP NDI. Now, that is all you need to do on each machine that is going to deal with um, NDI traffic. That should, and we'll demonstrate it in a minute, block the NDI traffic um, on any machine that has those going in and out. So let's have a look. If I go back to here. So let's come in here. I'm going to now my firewall on my public is switched on and we are going to run up some of our I'm going to make sure my firewall on this side is also switched on public network turn firewall on so we've now got our firewall established on both of these um, let's just open up our yep our NDI Dante controller not sorry our Dante controller we can now see that yep okay we haven't blocked anything as far as Dante is concerned it can still see things that we need to see and if we had audio coming in, I'm no doubt that would be passing as well. So let's now open up and have a look at our production network. So we're going to do the same thing, studio monitor, exactly the same thing again. Let's open up a load of them. There's the first one. I'm going to, while that's opening, I'm going to open up the next one. And let's open up the next one and let's start having a look at what's happening as far as this data is going. So far, staying on production network before we were already going on to, there we go, it's going up, it's going up on production as we make these connections. Notice the Dante is still effectively nothing. There's nothing really going through it. We have, uh, currently we have four running. Uh, just so you know, it wasn't vMix, that top right hand corner. Uh, up there is um, the desktop. So that's uh, vMix desktop capture. So we're running three out of vMix itself, one out of vMix desktop capture. So we're not blocking uh, the actual program itself. We are blocking the ports. And you will notice that we have nothing coming on our Dante network. Let's um, go to, let's open up another studio one. Let's just prove it, see what else we can get in. Uh, it's on my other screen at the moment. I'm just going to select something. Let's put this across here. We've got all sorts of things going on. Uh, not to, let's just duplicate one of these up again. Let's do output four. So let's see if anything comes up. There's another big buck coming on and still nothing is coming on to our Dante network. Hurrah, we have done it. So there we go. It's a simple way of doing it. Just to summarize, you're basically going to make sure your Dante network card is in the public area of your firewall. You're going to switch off firewalls on the private and the domain area. Uh, you're probably not using the domain anyway, but switch off the private one as well. And you are going to then create those two rules in the public section to block that particular range of ports. Make sure that it is just that range of ports that you're blocking. <coughs> Some, you have to be careful that Dante and uh, NDI do share a couple of ports 
uh, for things like discovery services and such like that. If you start putting those in as well, you're going to start causing problems with your Dante network work. You don't want to do that. Just that 5960 upwards on that public network. Make sure that you enable the firewall on public and you should be good. Let's just have a quick check. How are we doing? Yep, yeah, 227 megabit down and uh, nothing on my Dante network at the moment. Fantastic. Um, that works great. That's the way I do it. I do that on any of the machines that are on Dante and NDI. We don't have to worry if they've only got an NDI card in there. That's fine. Not a problem. Or if they've only got a... Uh, um, well, we probably have. No, we, if they've got a Dante, they're not going to be pulling in NDI anyway. So um, it's only on the machines that have two and on both the networks. Hopefully that has been of use to you. If you do have questions on it, uh, please feel free to ask. Again, the same principles will uh, work on other firewall pieces of software and no doubt on a Mac as well. If you can enable the firewall port blocking on that, I'm sure you can. Um, main thing is just block those ports on just that card and you should be good to go and keeping NDI off your precious Dante network. Again, hopefully this has been useful to you. If it has, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, more content coming from me on a regular basis. In the meantime, again, thank you very much for watching.